Hello and welcome to News Clicks International Roundup. We're going to discuss what has become a major issue for Boeing as their 737 MAX 8s have been grounded. Initially, it was only a certain set of countries, in fact, all the countries except the United States. As of now, even the United States, after President Trump issued some directives, has grounded the 737 MAX 8s. Raghu, what actually happened in this flight seems to be very similar to the Lions Air flight which had crashed a couple of months back, three, four, four months or five months back. Does this indicate the 77 MAX 8s now are going to see problems? They have about 5,000 already on order. Do you think this is a major, uh, shall we say, crash of also Boeing as a consequence? Well, it will have serious consequences uh in the short to medium term, definitely, because uh, it's evident now that there is a design flaw uh, in the 737 MAX. Which uh, we are going to discuss. Series, yeah. Which we will be discussing. And because it's a design flaw, unless it is properly rectified, checked, certified, uh, which is a process which is not going to be less than six to eight months, I would say, at a minimum, if you're going to get proper certification, and the certification will be done by different regulatory agencies in the US, in, the, in Europe, in other countries. Some countries will automatically, once the FAA certifies, they will certify. Some countries will do it independently. It's going to be a painful process for uh, Boeing. Also, this FAA, the Federal Aviation Authority has not really covered itself with glory. Not at all. Because all others grounded it. It still allowed the 737 MAX 8s to fly. In fact, we had a senior uh, figure in, the, uh, in CNN studio who said, I am quite willing to fly, but not, I would not buy a ticket for my three-year-old granddaughter. That's now, it doesn't seem to show too much confidence, shall we say, in the Federal, Federal Aviation Authority as well. In fact, the FAA for several years now has actually been taking advisories from the manufacturers, from Boeing, and basing their own certification on the self-certification by Boeing, which is obviously not a healthy practice. For a regulatory uh, agency. For a regulatory agency, and that too for a regulatory agency as powerful and we thought strong as the FAA that they would take their own steps to ascertain airworthiness of different uh, designs and then only issue certification. A recent study has shown that FAA has accepted self-certification by Boeing for as much as 80% of aircraft uh, features. And that's an astoundingly large figure. Coming back to the actual issues, if we look at the Lions Air flight path, which is, you can see, that after a certain point, you see instead of a steep climb, which is how the takeoff should have taken place, you see flattening. That's right. And this seems to be because the pilot and the flight control systems are fighting each other. That's right. Now, this has been, it has been argued, because of certain basic features of the uh, Boeing 737 MAX 8 version, which wasn't right. there in their uh, planes earlier. Right. This is something which has been introduced. Do you think that is actually perhaps the cause of what happened to the Lion Air flight as well as Ethiopian Airlines flight? See, the Lion Air is absolutely certain. We already know all the uh, facts about the Lion Air flight. There is still a little uncertainty about the Ethiopian uh, airline until all the data uh, black comes boxes in. The black boxes data. plus the uh, various other uh, real time uh, data from the engine and from the aircraft uh, which are being constantly monitored it will take a little time for that to come in but once that come in i think we will see the pattern being more or less the same what this clearly shows is that the aircraft is not being allowed to climb at its normal uh, rate of climb. The sensor which uh, gives a signal saying look you're climbing too high and this may lead to a stall and then forces the aircraft nose down. So uh, what you can see here is from the figure on top uh, you've got a rate of climb 
which the sensor perceives is too steep and thinks the aircraft is going to stall. And you can see from the bottom figure uh, there that it then adjusts the trim to reduce the climb and brings the nose down. So, so effectively the nose drops automatically that's because right. of this augmentation, what I've called as a maneuvering char that's characteristic right. augmentation system that's right. or the MCAS. Yes. This is adjusting the nose to actually drop, drop. if it thinks that yeah. this climb is too steep. Right. But there's the additional factor is, it's one thing if the plane automatically adjusts the the MCAS uh, gives a signal saying lower the nose based on an actual reading of a too high uh, rate of climb. But what seems to have happened in Lion Air and most probably in the Ethiopian airline as well is that there is a faulty indication of the uh, rate of climb. That the sensor for the rate of climb was faulty That's and right. in addition it seems so there is only the, a single sensor yeah. for the MCAS, each MCAS That's and only right. a single sensor. That's right. So whereas the aircraft is climbing at a normal rate of climb, the uh, sensor gives an erroneous message uh, to MCAS saying this is too high and lowers Lower the, dose. the dose. So then what happens is because of all these problems that we have encountered, uh, the pilot is not sure what is happening. He sees the aircraft nose being lowered. He then tries to raise it again. The system MCAS automatically lowers the nose. So there's a fight going on between the, the pilot of what and takes the, place. Yeah. Two things. It seems the Lion Air had about 12 such attempts to lower and raise the nose. That's right. The pilot trying to raise it while the MCAS yeah. was trying to lower yeah. it. So that seems to be yes. what is there. The second part of it is, and I think this is a very important issue, that it seems the MCAS operates even when the autopilot is off. Yes. So under manual conditions also, the MCAS will dip the nose. That's right. And therefore, it, it has to be separately switched off, that's not right. switched off directly if you switch off the autopilot Precisely. System. And that's where what we were talking about comes in, where the pilot is actually fighting with uh, MCAS. MCAS. Because MCAS is taking some steps, the pilot wants to correct that, and there's a wrestling match uh, going between them between the and then the nose goes into a downward position it enters a steep dive from which the pilot is not able to recover. recover. Now looking at this issue the problem seems to have been in the MCAS system. The people have pointed out two problems with the MCAS system. One is of course that if there's a faulty sensor it is a single sensor that the MCAS behaves badly and there is the pilots then have to switch it off manually. Right. Now this is the other part that switching off this system manually, the pilots were not really, it seems, either trained for it nor is it a standard uh, step in the operating procedure. Right. What happens is if it misbehaves, the pilots in their very experience no, they can switch off the electrical trim, yes. but it wasn't in any of the books. Neither was a part of any of the directions, guidelines right. you're given. That's to the, the most unfortunate right. part of this. This is not in the manual. Uh, there are training programs for pilots supposed to have been uh, conducted. One doesn't know how effective these training programs are. Who is it being conducted by? Uh, suppose an American airline does do a fair amount of training. Does that also apply uh, to Ethiopia Hold on. or to Lion? Hold on. There is a bigger issue. Apparently, Boeing had said that the Max, this Max, Max variant of the 737s is very similar to earlier uh, flights, uh, earlier uh, 737s. Therefore, the pilots did not need extensive training. Yeah. And therefore, this particular modification which they had made was something that should have been what the pilots were trained for, right. they were not trained. Were not. And in fact, this was one of the major reasons why the airlines were more willing to accept Boeing 737's MAX versions because they felt it was a very yeah. easy switch over while there was a major change which had been made, which in both these cases were perhaps crucial. That's right. And 
Boeing has issued an advisory uh, after the Lion Air around, crash. After the Lion Air crash, but then an advisory is a separate bit of document. It's not there as part of the manual. So unless the pilot is very conscious, he may not, especially in conditions of uh, sudden uh, malfunction or panic inside the cockpit, he may not refer to the advisory. He will look at the manual, manual and see nothing there. That's one. Second thing is we frequently hear references to the seniority of the pilots involved that in the Ethiopian air case, for example, that he had flown more than 8,000 hours. But if he had flown 8,000 hours on other models of aircraft and maybe a few hundred hours on the max, it doesn't necessarily train him to respond to these kinds of emergency uh, situations. And there have been also a lot of reference to an Indian pilot, which is the yeah. Lions Air case, Ethiopian pilots not the third world pilots yeah, being yeah. not so equipped. If this was a, a American pilot, it would have been different. The argument is the American pilots have a much larger ecosystem. They talk to each other, exactly. irrespective of the advisories and all. Exactly. They know what to do in case of an accident, exactly. accident like exactly. this. So that's the one case. Yeah. But the bigger issue still remains, why was the MCS system introduced at all? Yeah. And if we look at the uh, aircraft, the, what used to be there earlier in 737 and what is there in the 737 MAX variant, we see the clear difference and you can see the MAX uh, 737 at the top and you can see the earlier variant at the bottom. And you can see the positioning of the engine. That this, what has been argued is bigger engines needed it to be moved upwards and also had to be tilted a little. So that changed the flight characteristic. And because it was a different flight characteristic, it was felt that the pilots may actually stall the aircraft with the steep angle of attack, and therefore the need to put the MCAS. The real issue is that you are making the aircraft aerodynamically more unstable, and you're compensating with a control system modification. Yeah. Now, this is a fundamental issue. Should this be have done for a passenger airlines, yeah. that would not it have been better to have actually redesigned the fuselage and the uh, airframe in order to accommodate these changes, rather than this as a retrofit? I would think so. Uh, we know that the CFN uh, engine, the leap, uh, engine which has been introduced in the 737 uh, MAX as well as in the A320 NEOs uh, has tried to bring about a 15% improvement in fuel economy. And this has been done apart from other uh, modifications in the engine essentially by increasing the size of the intake fan which increases the diameter of the engine which means clearly some re-engineering has to be done in the nacelle, the uh, shell which holds the engine, which houses the engine, uh, how it is positioned on the wing, etc. And it seems fairly clear now that Airbus seems to have managed this uh, transition better than Boeing has. Boeing, it is known, has uh, given a tilt to the engine and has raised uh, the engine nose upwards because the clearance between this larger fan and uh, the surface of the runway was not as much as it should have been. So they have tried to compensate by changing this. Boeing had a higher That's right. seams. And, this, yeah. and, and this seems to have um, compelled pilots uh, who felt that it was... Uh, because of the size of and the larger weight of this engine, the aircraft had a tendency to, for its nose to go down. And the pilot, therefore, would compensate by raising the nose up, which may have triggered this stall warning. Uh, MCAS. Yeah, but because Boeing automated this MCAS response overriding uh, the pilot, it brings about the situation where 
the pilot and the aircraft are battling each other. So three sets of separate issues. One is a faulty sensor, a signal sensor being used for the MCS, right. the MCS itself trying to correct for what was a instability introduced by a larger engine. Yes. And the third thing, not telling the pilots right. all of this, right. leaving him in ignorance about the how the MCAS was operating, right. how it was operating even when they were in manual, and if there was a faulty MCAS, then they should switch it off, what is called switch off the electrical trip, which is not yeah. a normal procedure. Right. Set operate the cutout. That's right. Now that's, that's not a normal not procedure. A normal. It's not a switch that you do. Yeah. So all of these three things right. actually combined in this particular case and really to me, apart from anything else, not in, informing the right. operator, i.e. the pilot, is the key problem. And added to this is of course the fact that an aircraft is at, at its most vulnerable during takeoff. During takeoff. And it is during takeoff that the angle of attack becomes a major issue uh, in the aircraft because that's when the nose is tilted up. Once it has reached cruise altitude, it's flying along merrily. It's precisely at this point that this vulnerability gets exposed. The pilot gets into a confusion about what's happening, and that's the most dangerous uh, Stalling of the aircraft during takeoff right. is the most dangerous, most dangerous part of the flight. Absolutely. That That's what Absolutely. you're really saying. You know, this is also the commercial part of it. The reason Boeing was doing it, because they were feeling the pinch of Airbus 320 taking over a segment of their market, and they did not have an aircraft really which could go head to head with A320, Airbus 320. Yeah. And therefore this sh change, short changing, shall we say, the airlines, the passengers, whatever you say it, by a quick, uh, quick and dirty, uh, shall we say, yep. retrofit fix, fix yep. or what it, if you want to call it, which does not really look at the fundamental issue, but That's tries right. to retrofit something right. onto the aircraft, which was, it wasn't designed for initially. Right. Penny wise and pound foolish on the part of Boeing, because Boeing's for saving a few, a few months uh, of design time, uh, and in this race with uh, Airbus, they have lost a lot more time, money, and reputation in what's essentially a two-horse uh, race in the aviation business. And actually, with this, the so-called 5,000 orders, yes. how much now yes. deliveries will be asked for is an open question. Yes. And that means that we really are seeing a huge blow to Boeing yes. because this segment seems to be the most popular segment in terms of aircraft and airlines usage. The only thing saving Boeing at this stage, I think, is the fact that the Airbus Neo has had its own share of problems with engine uh, functioning, uh, cutouts in the compressor stages, etc. But we can discuss that some other time. They seem to have recovered from it in most theaters across uh, the world, but Boeing is now in serious trouble because all their aircraft have been grounded, which has never happened with Airbus. And also though, you know, if you see it, that two aircraft crashed in fairly quick succession. That's right. And that sort of puts a different complexion right. to the whole thing. And I think the reputation is also because information sharing and all right. of this didn't happen at the right time. Thank you very much, Raghu, for being with us. Thank you for watching NewsClick. Do keep watching our episodes on this and other issues.